Well, to discuss the opportunities available to vets and much more, I'm pleased to say we're joined by Gudrun Ravitz, President of the BVA and Senior Vice President Sean Wensley. Thank you both for joining me. Now, vets provide 24-hour care. How do you make that work? Being able to provide 24-hour care is a really important privilege that us as veterinary surgeons have. It means that we can be there throughout the night at whatever time of day to provide emergency treatment, which is really important for the health and welfare of animals. But it also impacts on us being there for everybody during the day when clients need to come in and see us for the more routine things. We know that from the BVA's Voice of the Veterinary Profession survey that when vets are looking for jobs, one of the things that really highly prize is the flexibility of working, whether that's for child care or whether that's for a sport or, or work-life balance, meeting friends, it's really important to them. And I think that given that we now, within our professions, we have a wide variety of different businesses working as practices for pets and animal owners and keepers, we have the opportunity to be flexible. But also what we find is that our people who need us, our pet owners, our clients, our animal owners, our animal keepers, they also want that flexibility. Everybody's working, different shifts, different lives now. And when they need to see us with our pets, it's different different than it would have been some years ago. And Sean, how are you supporting newly qualified vets? Well, the transition from uh, university life into your, into your first job in the workplace is inevitably stressful. There are stresses associated with that. Unfortunately, what we're finding is there's a bit of a lottery in terms of the extent to which you receive essential support in those early years. So I was really lucky. I'll fondly uh, recollect my uh, early days in practice where I had great supportive bosses and managers and a lovely team around me. But what we hear, uh, both anecdotally and through survey information, is that that's not the case for far too many young vets, uh, and that's concerning, obviously. Half of vets who graduated in the last eight years say that their career hasn't matched their expectations, part of which is attributable to their, the lack of support. And other factors that they cite in survey findings are uh, opportunities for career progression, the pay, the remuneration and the work. So we absolutely have to focus on how we provide leadership and resources to support our young vets. Uh, the work that we've been doing in Vet Futures with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons found that uh, seven out of 10 vets said that career support is one of the most, if not the most important things to them in their first job. And so now for us, the job is to act on that. We're helping develop and signpost to resources that help with the likes of the professional development phase uh, and mentoring in, in practice in particular, but other employment uh, scenarios as well. And for us, a key focus at the moment at BVA is developing and putting maximum resource uh, possible into our young vet network. So that is also a collection of helpful resources, but importantly, it's also uh, facilitated and organised meetings where young vets can, and recently graduated vets can simply get together and to share experiences from life and practice. And what feedback are you getting from that? Very, very positive. Uh, so at the moment, that concept, uh, these, these groups of recent graduates, has started to uh, grow organically in different parts of the country and we've gathered representatives from some of the ones that we know are really going great guns and having frequent, well-attended, well-supported meetings to figure out what was it that made such a success of theirs, so we're identifying critical success factors. We've now recruited someone into BVA to be able to act as a central focus within our own staff, to act as a point of contact so that if there's a recent graduate out there that says, I've heard about this thing and it looks great to me, how do I get it going in, in our local area? They contact a dedicated person here and the rest uh, is, is fully supported from our side at BVA. So we want to see that success grow like wildfire around the country because it's going to be really important. Gudrun, one of the big issues across the board is Brexit. Yes. Uh, what impact is that having? So the UK's decision to leave the EU has obviously had a significant impact and will have a significant impact on, on various areas within the veterinary profession, whether that's in education, in research, in workforces, um, in animal health and welfare. And it's really important that we play an absolutely key role in the next step. Um, one of the biggest areas for us is workforce issues. And our first priority was um, gaining assurance and reassurance for the thousands of EU nationals um, as working as veterinary surgeons within the wider profession. And they are doing a myriad of jobs that are so, so important. So we have written to um, all of the environment ministers for the four UK governments to try and seek reassurance and insurance for them. Another obvious key priority for us is animal health and welfare. 
The UK is renowned for its high standard of animal welfare and it is important that with any negotiations that we look to enhance that where we can but also to make sure it is always at the forefront of everything we are doing. And it's important to note that the veterinary profession can play a role in all those interfaces that we touch, whether that is animal health and welfare, whether that is workforce, but also importantly other areas such as environment and One Health where the veterinary profession is heavily involved. So it is a hugely important area for us, but as, as we know there are unknown unknowns um, and it's important that we get to grips with where we fit and we, we play our part within that, which is why we've set up a, um, a, a working group to look at this that is being headed by Alex Simmons, an ex-deputy chief veterinary officer. And we will get heads together to really come to grips with the opportunities that there are for us to, to play into those opportunities, but opportunities for the veterinary profession, animal health and welfare and all the important people that are working within the profession. And Sean, how important is it that your profession maintains its global role? It's essential. Um, BVA and the, the UK veterinary profession has a long-standing and proud tradition of being uh, outward-looking, inclusive, considering the position that we occupy on the global stage. Um, in practical terms, we do that through close working relationships with the Federation of Vets of Europe, the Commonwealth Veterinary Association and the World Veterinary Association, and those relationships will remain extremely important to us. Uh, I think we can't shy away from the fact either that we're in a, a position that society is increasingly recognising of having seven billion people on the planet at the moment rising to a projected nine billion by around 2050 on a planet with finite resources and clearly that creates lots of tensions and competition for how we allocate those resources fairly and the veterinary profession and other professions will demonstrate some of their key relevance in the contributions they make to figuring out those tough dilemmas. So we're trying at once to solve climate change, biodiversity loss, antimicrobial resistance. We need to put food in the mouths of all of these extra people, but in a way that prioritises uh, the, the social justice of farmers and citizens, make sure that it's all done fairly and equitably and critically for us as vets, that the welfare interests of sentient animals are fully accounted for as well. And I think vets are proudly going to make a very full contribution to that, that set of problems. Fascinating stuff. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now back to Natasha.